The woman who filed a lawsuit against Hockey Canada after an alleged sexual assault four years ago in London, Ontario, has broken her silence. She spoke with Robin Doolittle of The Globe and Mail. Robin just got back to Toronto a little earlier this afternoon. She joins us now. So, Robin, thank you for making time for us. Yeah, thanks for having me. First of all, what did the woman, known as EM in your reporting, have to say, and why did she want to speak? She said that in the last two months, she has felt very vulnerable and exposed, that this is not something that she ever wanted to kind of spiral into this national scandal uh, that it's become. Um, I think it's important to note, uh, and I've done a lot of reporting in this area, so this is significant to me, she did not you know, leak this information to the media or release it in any way. So... Um, you know, she's kind of had to sit back and watch this story be told. And, and she said that. She said, you know, it's been really difficult to see the facts told in pieces and not as a whole. And when you ask why she's speaking out now, I think I think that's that's essentially it. Is she and her lawyer, I had a brief conversation with her and a more lengthy one with her lawyer and say that it's they say it's been it's been frustrating watching some of the misinformation circulate. For example, that she didn't cooperate with the initial police investigation. And you know, Robin, of course, her coming forward with those allegations uh, certainly has uh, forced a reckoning when it comes to Hockey Canada, has, has really spurred that. So wondering if in your discussions you got a chance to, to talk to her about how she's feeling about that aspect of it all. She definitely was focused on, you know, just feeling sort of... Um, uh, I, I, to use her word, exposed and vulnerable at how this has sort of spiraled. She did say that she's hopeful that this does lead to some positive change. Um, I, I do think, you know, what is an interesting element here, again, is this is not a case where the the complainant came forward or leaked this to the media. You know, this was um, a lawsuit that was settled. It the the scandal kind of broke, and now it's it's evolved into this thing where we have federal hearings, we have investigations from the NHL, from Hockey Canada, a revived police investigation, sponsors pulling out, calls to boycott the World Juniors. That this has become kind of an escapade that was was not what the the complainant at the center of this case was hoping for. And, you know, part of what you learned in your conversation and your reporting on this, too, is that before the lawsuit, uh, there were contact, there was contact, rather, uh, between uh, EM and police. Give us a little bit of a better sense of that timeline that, that you learned. Yeah, so like I said, this was one of the big reasons, I think, that they've decided to say something now. This story broke in May, uh, on May 26th, I believe, and that same day, Hockey Canada released a statement saying that it had been made aware of the allegation when it occurred back in 2018, that it hired a law firm to look into it, but that the person who came forward with the allegations did not cooperate with police and did not cooperate with their investigation and that they supported her decision to do that. And her lawyer says that's absolutely not the case and provided, you know, a series of examples, for example, that she had contact with the police very quickly after the, the allegation that she spoke to a detective on June 22nd, which was about three days after the alleged assault. Uh, that she spoke again two days later, two days after that, again in the in August, that she made it clear that she wanted to pursue charges, that she had a physical exam at the hospital, that she provided the clothing she wore that night to investigators, and then after seven months was told that the case was not going to be proceeding. This was in you know February 2019, and that that was a real setback for her and contributed to the decision that um, like the, the three year wait time between the end of the police investigation and her deci decision to pursue civil litigation. And part of that, too, that we learned from your reporting is that there was a, a lie detector test that was involved, too, in this. So so what were the details on that? What was the outcome with that? Yeah, so her lawyer said last week she met with a London police detective, and on Thursday she also sat for a privately funded polygraph exam. So this was an exam that she, uh, her legal team arranged and paid for. It was conducted by a former London police service uh, examiner, and she was found to be t uh, truthful in her statement to, uh, to the examiner. You know, lie detector tests are not 
uh, admissible in court as evidence, lie detector results, I should say, are not admissible in court as evidence of someone's credibility. And in this case, it doesn't speak to the question of whether the hockey players honestly and reasonably believe that she was consenting. But what was really significant to me is that uh, this was something that she felt that she needed to do to try to um, help her case. I have a quote from her lawyer that I thought was, you know, important. Um, she said that she wanted to take that extra step to do whatever she could to establish that she is telling the truth, which again just speaks to this point of feeling like her story is being told without her voice and and wanting to do something to kind of take a little bit more ownership over it. And finally, I'm not sure whether or not this was part of your conversation with EM, but wondering whether or not you did get a chance to speak to her about the 2002, I believe, allegations that also uh, have uh, emerged uh, regarding Hockey Canada and, and whether or not she had a reaction to, to more people coming forward. I think it's 2003, the World Junior Team. Um, but no, we did not speak about, about that. Um, and uh, I think that that, again, though, just speaks to how far reaching this story has has grown. Robin, thank you so much for your time today to uh, share your conversation uh, with the woman who has brought forward these allegations. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Robin Doolittle is a reporter at The Globe and Mail. She joined us today in Toronto.